Hello everyone and welcome back to Nomi Factory. So last time we made polyethylene PVC and a bunch of other byproducts associated with this process. We used the plastic to unlock the cheaper circuits and we now have the cheapest tier 1 and the third tier 2 circuit. Yeah, I've been doing a bit of crafting between episodes, look at all these things. And the fact that we now have all of those circuits to work with means that we can more easily craft these loot fabricators. And we are going to start today with another upgrade to DML. So the way that this is set up right now is we are using simulation chambers to give us pristine matters. And at the moment we are just manually exchanging these for resources inside the loot fabricator. And then all of the resources end up in these drawers. So I reshuffled some of our machines here just to give us a bit more space to work with. All of these have a power connection underneath and we're also going to have some item conduits underneath for the extracts. Remember, these are sided machines, so insert has to be on the top. And I believe output can be on the sides, but we're going to do it from the bottom. So we'll start with the simulation chambers here. This is going to be set up in exactly the same way we had it. Insert is going to be on brown, and I believe this only accepts polymer clay as the inserts, which is basically the fuel source for these. And all the extracts on the bottom will be blue. Then to start feeding the polymer clay, which remember we make over here, however we have a storage bus on the drawer controller, we can request it in this interface. And this is also round robin on brown, so it will be distributed among all of these simulation chambers here. Where this differs from what we had before is the addition of these loot fabricators here. I'm stuck on the conduits. <laughs> so we are going to dedicate a loot fabricator to each one of the resources that we want to exchange from the pristines. So insert it again is going to be from the top here. Let's start with the zombie pristines, which we request in the interface. This will have to plug in with some ME conduit so we can extend along this cable. All of these loot fabricators will need filters in them though, and we're going to dedicate two for zombie pristines. And we want this extract connection on round robin, so it should distribute it amongst all of these that request zombie matter. So if we were just to select, for example, iron, this is going to create iron and extract it forever, basically, until it runs through all of the pristines. But since there's two resources that we want to use for zombie pristines, we want also rotten flesh. Actually, let's stop this right now. We are going to also add some extra logic to turn the extract off. I don't think there's a way for us to turn off the loot fabricator itself, so the next best thing is to turn off the extract from the machine. So this first loot fab is going to be for iron, and we're also going to set the level emitter to iron. We'll start this at 5000 and we'll also invert the signal. So it will emit a redstone signal whenever we have less than 5000 iron in our AE system. And here instead of doing always active on blue, we want this active only with a signal. And I think I'm going to actually have to move these drawer controllers to the center. And that way the item conduit that's connected to all of these machines can allow us to insert and in straight into the drawer controllers here. So that's the basic idea, let me do the rest of these things. Alright, so some of these things I have set arbitrary numbers for now, and they're most likely going to change throughout the game. Things like the iron and gold I've set at 5000. Same thing for ender pearls and diamonds, all of that stuff is set quite high at 5000. The magma blocks is something that we don't really need to buffer that much of, so that I, I only have at 1000. Blaze rods even lower at just 200. Coal is set pretty high, I think this one is silver. And same thing for sulfur. Sulfur we're going to get out of byproducts later on anyway. So we don't need to produce a ton through DML this way. Oh yeah, I guess there is quite a big internal buffer in all, all of these loot fabs. So we buffer more than we actually set in here, since the level emitter only reads what's in our AE system. But yeah, if we come over here check the terminal now, we're going to see a lot of resources here. <laughs> a lot of them have already reached their cap, such as the silver here, we're capped at 2000. This is really, really nice to see. I think we can also pick up some storage monitors here. And this way it allows us to actually display the item, and this way we can very easily tell which loot fabricator is doing what. Alright, well I think with this we can call the system good for now. Until the next upgrade, but remember this is all the simulation chambers that we can currently support with the pulsate and polymer clay production. I noticed when swapping in all of these data models that they are all now self-aware, I think besides this shulker here. And whenever this happens we definitely want to make more. Remember, it does take time for them to level, and we want to be able to have them before we actually need them. That's probably too many endermen for now. I think we should prioritize the shulker for, for the diamonds. Yeah, so we're going to pull out all the self-aware and throw in some basic tiers. And these are now the data models we're running. With all of these ones now, of course, at self-aware, ready for us when we upgrade and have the ability to make more simulation chambers. You know, it's actually quite dark in this base as well. 
I think we should add some feral flare lanterns here. These things are amazing, they just automatically light up the whole chunk. In fact, I think the range is 64 blocks, but they're cheap enough. I think we'll just put one under every single chunk here. Centered, of course, this is... no. <laughs> so I'm finding us that actually using quite a bit of wood these days. We use it in chests and drawers and hoppers, all that stuff. So I think we should do something about our wood supply. And all the wood we could ever want is going to come from this Ender.io farming station right here. We got some drawers for the output and I've also actually cut this in half. I know from experience that we are going to need canola in the next couple of episodes so I've got that planted on this half here. And on the other half we have rubber trees which of course can give us saplings, can give us rubber which we can extract and also compress for rubber sheets. And the reason we set this up, the rubber wood. So as most of you guys will probably know, the Ender IO farming station takes tools to run. I don't know if it's possible actually to get unbreakable tools in Nomi Factory, but we're going for the easy route here, we are using stone tools. So basically the way this works is the extracted wood gets prioritised into this auto crafter. This craft sticks, which is then round robin between the, these next two mechanical crafters, which also grab cobblestone from the cobblestone generator. One is making hoes and one is making axes. And then those are sent into the farming station to be used as tools. Very, very, very easy setup here and it is a self-sustaining system. So we don't have to add anything to this except for power. Alright, and one of the other things you may remember I mentioned last episode is the centrifuging of rubber wood. Which can give us a bunch of different byproducts here, all of which are quite useful. Carbon, wood pulp, plant balls, rubber and methane. So I think now is as good a time as any to set up a little centrifuge for rubber wood. I think we'll do this again at MV. We'll need to be able to store iron, so we need a drawer system and I think also a drum for the methane. So this should be quite simple here. I think we just need our centrifuge into a drawer controller. Into, I think it's four item outputs that we get from this. We'll want the interface to supply the rubber wood. Item conduit from the interface. Filtered for the centrifuge. Remember, we filter everything. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And then we can just automatically send all of this to the drawer controller on the right. And the fluids we can extract via conduit. Yeah, I think we shift the interface back a block and that way we can put a fluid storage bus on the steel drum for the methane. This will put on high priority since we want this to be used last. And the storage bus similarly will also be high priority. And we'll partition the fluid for methane. And I think we're done. I have realised last episode I also missed the storage bus here on this drawer controller. For our plastics. Storage bus here. And did I miss any other? I think I missed this one as well, right? Yeah, for silicon and silicon dioxide dust. Although that's not really urgent, I think I'll maybe save the storage bus for now. Oh yeah, last two additions to the system, we also want to trash the excess methane. Otherwise it'll stop whenever the buffer of the machine fills up. So again, we disable round robin on this and we set this to the lowest priority. And we also want some void upgrades in our drawers here. I think we want to void the wood pulp, void the plant balls and void the rubber. And we'll use the carbon to control whenever this thing stops, since that's the most useful resource we get out of this. And some storage upgrades wouldn't go amiss on these drawers. So one of the things that we don't have in GTNH yet, and probably should add when, whenever we go back to that series, is going to be a cobble works. Which is basically a cobblestone generator and then you process all of the associated resources that you can get from cobblestone. There is actually lots of different options that we have in this pack, in terms of things that we can do with the outputs of cobblestone. So you're going to see just how important this process is. Doing this though is going to take many many machines, here we go. So we are going to start off with 9 MV macerators, that's 6, 7, 8, 9, perfect time for the rain. <laughs> we'll also need 2 MV electric furnaces, 2 chemical reactors, and 2 electrolyzers. Oh and a fluid solidifier. We'll need more space to work with, I don't know how long this line is going to go, but uh, <laughs> we're going to keep going this way. This is the whole reason we're in the void here. And we almost forget the whole reason we're setting this up, the cobblestone generator. Okay, here's hoping we lay everything out correctly the first time. <laughs> no doubt this will have to be rebuilt, but everything is going to of course start with our cobblestone generator. And we can do cobblestone into gravel. 
Mostly everything will be stored in compacting drawers so that we can get the compressed and double compressed. And on second thought, I think we'll take the cobblestone generator up to the compact version. And this way we can centralize the cobblestone generator and then use item conduit to distribute amongst all the macerators. So again, we've got cobblestone into gravel. Two more macerators will give us sand. And actually we'll be working vertically here. And the sand we will actually split two ways between its own drawer. Round robin on the extract of course. And this is also going to get a furnace for glass. Which we'll have to plug in here. Awesome, let's lock all these drawers. The next line is going to be three macerators this time. So again, cobble to gravel, gravel to sand. Make sure we plug these in. And this time it's going to be sand to dust blocks. With the dust we can chemical react this with water for clay. We can also chemical react this for netherrack, but we don't need netherrack here. The trouble is if we place a chemical reactor here, it means that we need to get water up here. I don't know how we're going to do that. So, you know what, we're going to reverse the order of some of these things. Cobble inserts will now be on this one here. And we point this to the left. And then one more above that, and then we can put the chemical reactor here. And that's much more easy to get water to. We can place an end of water underneath. And we'll use some fluid conduit here, I think. So from here, I think we'll give clay its own buffer in our drawer. And we'll also round robin this, again similar to how we done sand. This will also go into another macerator here. Plug this in, and we'll get clay dust this way. I don't think we need to buffer clay dust. We will, however, send this into an electrolyzer. And amount of cable. Hold on. As you all know, electrolyzing clay dust gives us silicon, aluminium, sodium, and lithium. So this means we'll need four drawers for this. This might be where we place the drawer controller, since if you input to a drawer controller, any drawer that it's connected to is a valid inventory for the machine to send its items to. Which means technically we can put these drawers anywhere and also connect these ones to the same network. Although this one is now on its own. Hmm. Is this rebuild number one? <laughs> Wait, hold on. If we move the electrolyzer here, this is where our drawer controller will go. With the four drawers above that to connect all of the items. Silicon, aluminium, sodium, and lithium. And then we can use a controller slave actually to input from the electrolyzer right here which acts as a controller it means that you can s still insert all the items into this and they will end up in their correct drawers second to last thing we're missing is nether quartz which we're going to get from electrolyzing glass and rather than from taking from this one we're going to build a separate macerator stack for this awesome there's our nether quartz also going to go in a compacting drawer and there's one more thing we're missing from this system, I think. You remember the magma blocks we set up in the loot fabricators earlier on? Well, we can actually chemical react these with nothing, just power. <laughs> and we get lava from this. And then lava we can use to, well, we can centrifuge for a bunch of random stuff. We're going to skip the centrifuge though, it's way too slow and inefficient. Instead, we're going to fluid solidify for obsidian. And that's going to look something like this. We have an interface to supply the magma blocks. Chemical reacting for lava, buffered in a drum. And then from the drum, we can put a pump on this to export it all into the fluid solidifier. We'll need a block mold, which I'm gonna take from this solidifier here. And this process is very slow, but it is passive. So it, it doesn't really need to be blazing quick. Once again, another compacting drawer for obsidian. And we'll need drawer trim to connect the drawer networks together. And I know I said that was the last thing, but we, we set up a cobble works and we didn't buffer cobblestone. I am amazing at this game, right? <laughs> no, we can fix this. We can add it on the end here. There, we got an extra cobblestone generator in a drawer above for cobblestone. And we can even save an interface just by having the magma blocks in this interface for the rubber wood. So yeah, this system costs us, I mean, a few Envy machines. But we do have the cheaper circuits to build them now. I do think it's well, well worth setting this up early since we can get, crucially, aluminium dust out of this. And in fact, we're going to add drawer upgrades to all of these things. I think we'll probably just max them all out. Although it does cost us emeralds and we don't have this set up from DML yet as we don't have enough endermen pristines. Since that's all been used for pearls and that is used for polymer clay so we have to prioritize that over emeralds. But we'll give at least a couple of storage upgrades to all of these. Quartz actually will give some extra too since that's also used in polymer clay. It'll be nice to have a buffer for later on. And I think the last thing is to connect this to our AE system we'll need a storage bus on the drawer controller. We want this on high priority since we want these things to be used last. Generally, I use plus and minus 1000 priority. Higher priority storage is used last and lower priority storage is used first. Whenever you, for example, autocraft something. So yeah, in the terminal, we should see all of these items going up now. Glass, sand, gravel, all of these dusts. Oh yeah, and the only ones we're going to put a void upgrade on is the ones from clay electrolysis. We want to make sure it doesn't stop producing aluminium. 
but I don't mind void in excess silicon, sodium, or lithium. And I had to add a second conduit connection, even with extract speeds in here. Somehow we weren't getting enough water to this chemical reactor, but the second connection on the ender floor seems to have fixed that. Oh, and the rain stopped. Nice. <laughs> Not for very long, I suspect. Alright, so now that we have more resources from DML being automatically produced, I think we should increase the buffers here on the energetic alloy. We'll take this up to 6,000, I think. We'll also adjust vibrant alloy to another 6,000. I also moved the ender chest that was sitting over there somewhere next to our terminals that gives us grains of infinity. And this I've just added to this drawer network here and put the storage bus on. And this way we expose grains of infinity to our AE system. We are going to be going through quite a bit of those in the near future. Alright, so if we have a look at our quest book here, we did skip the distillation to our last episode. And I don't think that's something we'll get to today. However, I would like to deal with the input items for the distillation tower. So we did unlock the mid-game quite a while ago. This looks like quite an intimidating chapter, but actually it's it's really not too bad. This is where the fun begins, right? So our goal here is to get to the next tier of circuit once again. And for this, we are going to need epoxy. There are two different ways to get epoxy. The naphtha route or the bisphenol A route. We did naphtha last time we played Omni and uh, we had to actually switch to the first recipe here. As this naphtha route just really isn't efficient enough. So we're going to do it properly the first time around this time. This whole process here is all going to start with oil. So the best way to get oil is the oil drilling rig. It's a big multi-block structure in CE. We'll need lots and lots of steel for this. In fact, I've started batch crafting, I think, 10 or 12 stacks in here. I noticed for the screen, we also need to get into some grid power. Grid power is the extra utilities to unique form of energy. I think this is a quest. The best way, I think, until we have the dragon egg is just to do water mills. And the water mills give 4 GP each. It's just some MV components. The only thing is we need stone burnt for this, which requires grid power to make. So we start with the manual process. First of all, we need the manual mill, which starts with polished stone. We craft that with some Restonia and conductive iron. The Restonia comes from the Atomic Reconstructor. And with this, we can pick up the manual mill. Very exciting gameplay here. Hold right click. <laughs> okay, we have four. That's all we need for the first one. No more manual mill. And there's the first of, I think, five water mills we're going to be building. So the water mills obviously take water to run. It has to be flowing water optimally. But now that we have the first one placed here, we can easily make more from since the resonator should run without the manual mill. Perfect. This allows us to craft the other four water mills we're going to make. And we'll fill them in something like this with the water sources in each corner. So they now should be receiving around 14 each. There's a 2% efficiency loss, I think, because we have more than four water mills. But I think, honestly, the way we have it is sufficient enough for now. And you know what? We're actually going to learn our lessons from the last run at Omni. Since we now have grid power and a resonator, we are going to immediately passive red coal, which is just simply coal through the resonator. And I can't remember the total number that you need to finish the game. I just know that it's like millions of this. <laughs> It's for one of the creatives right at the end of the game, but the earlier you get this started, the better. And of course, we'll max upgrade the drawer. So now that we got the stone burn, we can pick up the screen for the oil drilling rig. And the rest is just going to be lots and lots and lots of steel here. Yeah, this thing was a lot more steel than I remember, but I did do some crafting. I think I've got all the materials in my inventory. Here, though, we have no excuse for building the multi-block wrong. You guys know how I am with multi-blocks. Okay, so we are almost there with this thing. This does require at least HV power or above, which is something that we don't currently have in our base anywhere. I think we're safe just to go with the 4 amp version of the CEF. That's going to be a lot of vibrant alloy, and I think we are also short another tier 3 circuit. I'll have to make another one of these. And all of the HV machinery is going to take stainless steel at this stage. Quest unlock. After some crafting, there is our first HV CEF. And of course, we'll need the HV energy hatch. So now for the inputs and outputs for this thing. There are fluid inputs, item inputs, fluid outputs, and energy inputs for this. HV energy hatch will go here, connected to the CEF. And this is also connected to our main power network. According to the quest book here, we also need to supply this thing with drilling fluid. And drilling fluid is going to be made with lubricant, water, and also stone dust. Should give us lots and lots of drilling fluid. This isn't something we need to fully automate. We're just going to batch craft a big batch of this. So yeah, obviously the drilling fluid will go in the input hatch. We'll just use a conduit for the inserts. We need to supply this with drilling pipe, which has a 1% chance to be used. And I don't know if the bug is still in the game where it actually doesn't get consumed. 
I guess we're going to find out here, but we have almost a full stack here just to get us started. And I think we need to build some as part of the multi-block. There, that should have completed the multi-block structure. Yes, it did. And is it going to turn on? Oh yeah, nice! So we should be getting oil out of the fluid output hatch. Awesome, we're going to want something to store this in. Probably one of the bigger tanks, though I don't think we want to be using a steel drum for this, since it might be a couple hours before we actually get around to processing this stuff. A quantum tank should be sufficient enough to hold all of our oil. I keep picking up saplings here. <laughs> I should really blacklist those actually in the fluxo magnet. So yeah, this thing is just going to be passively making us oil until we are ready to pr process it. Obviously we'll have to keep an eye on the pipes and also the drilling fluid amounts. But this is where we're going to leave this setup for now, ready for next episode. And similar to last time, the addition of all the new machines running in our base has caused our power to almost be struggling here. So I'll have to craft up an extra few numismatic dynamos. However, that does mean that we'll have to run an extra few shulker models and produce more pulsating polymer clay. So I think that we should buff this just slightly. We'll keep all the machines at MV. However, we have now added an extra advanced electric furnace for glass, along with the electrolyzer for quartz. And also slightly moved the machines here, but I've also added an extra chemical reactor to make the resonant clathrates, which basically means that this electric furnace has 100% uptime. And I think to actually increase the polymer clay, we will need another alloy smeller. And now I think effectively we have doubled our pulsating polymer clay production. Each MV chemical reactor and alloy smelter combination can support 12.6, I think the number is, simulation chambers. So that means we can make the upgrades, which is something I think I'll do between episodes. But for now, I think we'll wrap things up here. We got our Ender IO farming station up for trees and also canola. We got processing set up for rubberwood and built our cobble works here, which seems to be running very nicely. I've been over to check this a few times. We also buffed the DML setup and are now automatically producing things in loot fabricators. And finally, we set up some oil ready for next episode. Oh wow, already up to 250 buckets here. Anyways guys, that is going to do this for today. Thank you once again for watching and I'll see you all soon for some more Nomi Factory.